We are handling the subject church growth challenge and I kind of like, you know, always since I started this wanting to to teach, right? Um, we got derailed a bit last week because it was a Father's Day uh, so we had to tackle the Father's message, right? Um, so I'm speaking on the subject, living a life of service in the house of God. Living a life of service in the house of God. Living the life of service in the house of God. You have been born again to serve. Are you hearing me? So you have been born again to serve. Is my mic clear to you? Okay. So all of us have been born again to serve. But there's a misunderstanding that is taking place in the body of Christ. People think they were born again to be blessed. So that is why when people come to church, they come for breakthrough. Nobody comes to serve. Right? I'm not saying that it's wrong to come for breakthrough. I'm not saying that it's wrong to come for healing, to come for whatever. You need a job. You need God to set you free from one area or another. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. All right? But it seems as if that is prominent and is kind of like uh, uh, very evident and ruling in the house of God. But Jesus wants to push us to service, not to blessings. But blessings are promised as we serve. So you get it. It is not that you're going to miss the blessings. But it is wrong to be in the church and focus on blessings. Because Jesus said, this is what he said. He said that, he said that, he said that the, 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 the ungodly people are rushing to these things. This is what he said. They're rushing to these things. They're rushing to clothes, to brands. They're rushing to cars and houses. But it says, as for you, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So your focus is service. So that word seeking is also equivalent to service. So be in the house of God and be involved in the house of God. Prioritize the house of God. That's what Jesus Christ says. You prioritize the kingdom of God. You prioritize the kingdom of God, not the needs you have. Yeah, for sure you may have pressing needs, but remember that the focus is God, his house, or anything that is pertaining him. Are you hearing this? Now, uh, the subtopic to the subtopic is how can we serve effectively? Because I want to be effective. I don't want to, I don't want to be in the church and just be hanging in the position. I just want to be in the church and just be there. But I want to be effective. I want to make sure, I want, I want to see the difference that I make in the church where I am, right? So how can we serve effectively? Number one, I'll give you six things. Number one, did I, did I say six things? Okay. Number one is being generous with our gifts and skills. Being generous with our gifts and skills. Our gifts and skills. Everybody here, you have some gifts or you have some skills. And I'm sure that those skills and gifts that you have are needed in the house of God. But it's up to you if you are generous or you are stingy about it. You know, there are people who can sit in the church and their service is needed in the church and they will sit and do nothing. Their skill is needed. But they will do what? They will literally do nothing. We have to be generous about this, the gifts that, that God has given to us. Now, go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 
First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. Now the Bible says, Peter says, as each one has received a ministry gift, somebody say a ministry gift, as each one has received a, mi a ministry gift, use it to serve, is that First Peter? Why your First Peter is not like mine? Okay, as each one has received a ministry gift, use it to serve one another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let him do so like one speaking to speaking the utterances of God. If anyone ministers, let it be done with the ability that God gives so that so that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Can you see that? So Peter says, if you have received a gift from God, he says that use it to serve one another. But what happens when we have gifts? Most gifted people want to be appreciated and put on the pedestal and be told you are unique. We can hardly find somebody like you. You are such so, you know, most, yeah, are you hearing that? Yeah, mo mo most gifted people want to be unique and to be different, not to serve. So Peter here is saying that when we have gifts, and, and I like what he says, he says, that, he's, he's, he says that as each one received a gift, this thing you did not work for, you received it. You received it. Or you discovered it. What I'm doing now, teaching you or preaching before you, I did not know it when I was born. I discovered it. And then received it. Then now I am obliged to preach it or to, or to give it to you that it's not for me. It's not for my glory. It's not for me to be appreciated, to be praised. But it's so that it can enhance your life. So if I use it, I don't need to use it for myself, but I need to use it for others. So is it clear to you? Oh God, are you hearing me? Hey. You can't be worshiping and listen to yourself. Oh, oh that note. <laughs> are you hearing that? It will lose the purpose. Huh? Like in one African country, they say papas. You know, <laughs> it will lose the papas. You see, so, 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 so whatever gift you have, whatever skill, I also include skill, whatever skill you have, because to have a skill, you have to have the ability given by God to attain it. There are skills that you cannot attain no matter how much you want because God did not put an ability in you to do it. I saw a two-year-old, I downloaded the video, that she can divide, she can multiply, she can do. I was appalled because I can't do that. They started him with seven times nine. And I needed a calculator, and the boy did not need a calculator, and she's two years. There are certain things, even when you like. We do not like it, uh, each other with mats. When it sees me, it goes the other side, and me, I will go to the other side. I'm not afraid. We, we are not friends, and we'll never be friends. Yeah. I only just went to school for meds so that I can count money. Finish. Don't tell, don't ask me about any other thing. As long as I know how to count money. So for me, because I need money to live. But I don't need mathematics to live. But there are some people who are natural with mathematics, you know. With numbers, it's, it's just, they, they, they get revived. The, the reason you, res, you, you are not born with that skill, but you, uh, you, you know, you are able to, you received an ability in order for you to attain it. So now, when you have it, then you have, you must make sure. Listen to me, please. I know that skill, most, most of the time, skill is for work. 
but make sure that you don't just work. Make sure that you attach serving to your work or attach something that you are not paid for. You are doing it for the good of humanity. You are doing it for the good of the house of God. You are, you are, you are, you are rendering your service through your skill. If a professional, please, attach it. Is that clear to you? You have to do what? Yeah, just come one day and say, no, I'm going to do this. I normally charge for this, but I'll, I'll come and do it for the church free of charge. I just want, it's my service. <laughs> I know that there's maybe, maybe you don't like that. Did you hear what I said to you? I said, myself, okay, I was called, I was called, I was called by one church. I was called by one church that is struggling financially. It's a big church. I mean, we are few here. That church is big. Right? Hundreds of people. But, but, but this church is making more income than that church. But that church has, man, I think that church is full of professionals. I mean, any type of profession you can think of is there. So people are there, but they are not there for service. And it shows through the income of the church that they are there for themselves, but not for service. You get that? And then I went to the church. The pastor said, please, I'm just asking you, there's nothing I can give to you. I said, don't worry, I will come and preach for free. I went to the church. Uh-huh. Opened the verse. Uh-huh. <laughs> and did not play. Yeah. No, I did not play. I said you are singing for me for the first time, but I'm here for, you know, yeah. Yeah. Then by... God's grace will raise a number of thousands. I think money. Money. We raised it. We raised it and I left. I did not want a portion of it. I had a right to it. I had a right maybe to 10%, but I chose not to take anything. Why? Because that's my service. I'm not doing this for money. Are you hearing that? No, I get blessed for this, <laughs> you know. But, but, but it's that the priority is the message that God has given me. The priority is not money, but is the message that God has given to me. Are you hearing me? So if you check even the big businesses, most of the time, they don't use the word money. Even when they work for money, they don't say money. They say our services. Our services to our clients. Yeah, but they are making money, eh? Yeah, they are making money, eh? But, but they are saying our services, you know? You know, you know our company, the service, that we, the, the service that we do. Service that we do. All right? So we must learn that. So you've got a gift don't use it for yourself. Don't use your gift to pump your confidence. Have confidence to enhance your gift. There's a difference between the two. Are you hearing me? So then, then Peter says that this is, must be done, you know, you know, not for yourself, but for other people. Then he says that in let, 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 let it be done with the ability that God gives. The ability that God gives. Right? So we have to be generous with our skills, with our gifts. Number two, to serve eff effectively in the house of God, it is by putting your desires, needs, and wants aside. Putting your desires, needs, and wants aside. You have not served in the house of God until you have served while you are in need and you put your need aside and you focus on the needs of God. 
I have preached hungry with nothing to eat when I go back home. But I still preached. I've, I've preached uh, with financial constraint when I had maybe 20 rand balance in my bank account. I, 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 I still preached. When you serve, at some time you will have to put your needs aside. You'll have to put your needs aside. The book of Mark chapter 10 verse 45. Mark chapter 10 verse 5. Jesus says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. To give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus says, I, I did not come for myself. I don't preach for myself. I don't heal for myself. I don't multiply bread for myself. In fact, the Bible did not even tell us that when he multiplied bread and fish that he ate. Jesus must have been hungry. Because listen, when he was teaching for them for a long time, for sure even his belly was crying for something. But Jesus then started with people. And he even told his disciples, he said, sit the people down, organize the people, sit them down. And then the disciples had to carry the bread while they were hungry themselves. And they had to start with people. Not just with people, but with thousands of people. You have to go through thousands of people and serve them while you need the most what they, you are giving to them. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say to you. And, and, and sometimes, I think for me, sometimes, sometimes I find preaching like a punishment because God sometimes will have me preach what I need. Sometimes He'll want me to preach deliverance in an area where I'm bound and I see other people being delivered. Are you hearing that? But God still wants me to be faithful. You know, you know, God, God is, is God. no, no, not funny. What, what's the word? <laughs> okay, God is surprising. God is surprising. He will give you words as Moses, but he knows that you can hardly speak. Uh, are you getting it? He give you what? What? And say, Moses, go and say these words. To the people of Israel. So you have to learn to put your needs, to put your to put your desires aside, to put your pressing needs aside, and to put your wants aside. The, I, I'm just telling you the way for God to answer your prayer faster than you have prayed. You, don't, you have no idea. Are you here? I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> Do you have a need? Do you have your needs at home? Do you have a need with your parents, with your needs, with your siblings, with needs, with your with your relatives, needs with your, do you have needs? Do, do, do you have needs at work? Whatever that you have need. Can you serve without being pulled away and disturbed by the needs that are in your life? Can you encourage somebody who's hungry while your pots are empty and tell him that my sister, let me pray for you. God will provide. Can you desire for God to provide for someone else first of what you need and still celebrate? Ah, you have no idea. Are you hearing this? Listen what I'm trying, listen what I'm trying to say to you. Listen what I'm trying to say. I blessed many cars without having a car and blessed many houses without having a house and blessed many promotions without being promoted. This is called service. It's called service. 
I've blessed people and say, God bless you more. And they receive increment while I'm struggling financially. Can, can you do that? Can you, can you bless people? Can you push people down and still remain at the bottom? And still trust God that he will push you up like you have pushed the one that you have pushed and sometimes they forget about you. Sometimes we don't trust the people that we were all in the pit and I was able to say step here and I pushed you up and then you are on top over there and now you are walking to your destiny instead of turning around and stretching your hand, holding my hand so that I can come up to so you forgot. Sometimes when we serve, people will take people out of the pit and then they will forget us in the pit and they will move on with their lives as if they don't know that we were once in the pit with them and struggling with them, hungry with them, callous with them, with no house like them. Serving means that you take others as though they were greater than you, more important than you. It means that you see the image of God in spite of their mistakes, their shortcomings, or their attitude, or their gossip, or their... Are you hearing that? Sometimes we serve people who gossip us, who talk bad about us. Sometimes, but we are still expected to be faithful and to serve. Sometimes we serve with tears. Sometimes we serve with pain. Sometimes we serve with regret. But we still have to serve so putting your needs aside putting your desires aside, this is where many people are struggling they are struggling with this because their program is full of themselves and there's no space for God that's number two. Number three. We can only serve effectively in the house of God by being a good follower that serves the vision in its different dimensions. By being a good follower that serves the vision in its different dimensions. Guys, vision can sway, change and you know it can move to directions that you never thought would move the Bible says write down the vision and make it plain so that those who read it may run with it then it says that the vision may tarry the vision may tarry the vision may take a turn that you never thought it will take but the Bible says, wait for it. When, when, when it confuses you, don't give up. Wait. Because the Bible says that it will not tarry, it will come. So are you hearing that? So now, you have to be a good follower. And you have to understand that vision has different dimensions. In John chapter 12, verse 26. John chapter 12, verse 26. The Bible says, Jesus Christ says, If anyone serves me, somebody say serves me. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant also will, uh, also will be, right? If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. But look at this first. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. The most difficult thing in serving is following.
Because sometimes following will upset and disrupt what you do. Now, following is this. While you are thinking that we are going to Nazareth, then Jesus changes the way and says we are going to, you know. So following. So now, then Jesus Christ says, wherever I am, he says, also my servant will, be, will have to be there. Are you hearing that? So here's the issue. When you follow, we don't lack your presence. <laughs> If you don't follow, you are serving any department. The test that you are following is your presence. Does it make sense to you? Oh. I mean, I don't mean like three, five excuses. I can't. Is this. I'm held up and <clears throat> I can't make it. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. You are not following. <laughs> are you kidding me? You are, you, no, you are not following at all. The department you are serving is serving the desires and the wants you have. Because people can have something they lack in their childhood and come to church to substitute for it. Ah, you don't like me this morning. Listen, you can, get, you can get a person who serves sometimes and then there are heated problems and heated things and find that this person has been neglected by parents and all. Now that's why this person wants to be next to the leader all the time, leader all the time, leader all the time, leader all the time. And, and other people, if they want to go to the leader, blocks the people. Let me take you to the bishop. It's me taking you to the bishop. serve but exactly you are not serving God but you are serving your need your need of acceptance your need of appreciation if we don't if you do something three times four times and nobody's recognizing it then you sit down because you are not getting your I've been, I've, been, I've been in this game for a long time, eh? <laughs> I've, 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 seen, I've seen things, I've seen things, I've seen, I've seen things, I've, I've experienced things, eh? So, so, so the, sometimes the following can be disturbed and interrupted by the emotional impediments of the person who serves. No, I did not say that you are a bad person. I just said that you are not doing it right. And you are doing the right thing, but for the wrong reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I understand what I'm trying to say. If you are an armor bearer, you are carrying the bag for nothing, for, 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 for something wrong. Because you were never seen. So you looked for a position that will make you. You know what they say? Don't tell. I've been telling you guys. I've been telling you. Nobody sees mom without going via me. Guys, I've been telling you all the time. And seems as if we are not listening to me. <laughs> so, so you have a big, you have to be a good follower. You have and understand that as you serve, the vision has different dimensions. Different dimensions, it means that you can be in the front sometimes and be in the middle sometimes and even in the back sometimes and even be out of class at times. It's different. It means that you can be in the position today and then out of the position because the vision is calling for you to get out of the position. 
And some know they want to die there. <laughs> they want to die there. <laughs> They tell their grand grandchildren, I've been doing this for 54 years. But we want to see the work. We want to see the results. We want to see the impact. No impact, but it feeds the ego. Or it feeds the emotional aspect of the person who serves. Is that clear to you? So now, to be a follower now, it means that, remember, how do you follow? Somebody say focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you follow me, you have to focus. Because if I turn right, and then you are still in the wonderland, you are not focusing, you may find yourself walking alone. You can be in the church and walk alone. You can be in the church and serve alone and you are no more serving the vision but you are doing something but it has no purpose you are missing the purpose because you keep on missing the steps of following right is that clear to you so now the key here Jesus Christ the key says I am the visionary. I am the focus. I have the assignment that God has given me. You guys, God has given you to me in order to enhance the purpose that God has given to me. So you have to concentrate on me. I have to give you direction. I have to tell you. If you are doing it right, I have to tell you. If you are doing it wrong, I have to tell you. You can't, you can't measure yourself. You, you can't serve and measure yourself, but somebody has to measure you to say that you are serving right, you are doing it right, you are doing it accordingly. Do you know why? Because sometimes I can be in the church and appreciate myself that well, I'm so doing well and find out no. <laughs> so, so, so the, the problem like in churches is that of missing, missing the point and not following rightly and not understanding when the vision turns. This is what I used to say in the first church when I'm teaching. I would say, if you are building a house we have built the house built the house now you have to put furniture but now maybe you don't have financial ability for furniture you can take the bucket and turn it upside down and sit on it you can use a spoon as a as a as a tool spoon <sighs> To unscrew certain things a spoon a spoon can do it but it was never meant for that I was listening to some of the old videos church listening to worshipers I said ah, aha yeah ooh, ah. I said, yay, yay, yay. I said, God Almighty, I said, I thank you for these hearts, but I don't thank you for gifts. I thank you for the heart because the heart was right. It's a bucket. We used it as a chair. <laughs> I'm not sure. Are you hearing me, somebody? I know some pastors, oh God, hey, I know when I'm turning 50, I'm speaking stories now, you know, I don't know. This 50, 50 thing, I think it's, it's coming with stories now. Now, now, now look at this. The, the issue is this, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm, say, I'm not 
this, I'm not criticizing. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say to you, right? I am saying sometimes where you are serving is not where you are supposed to be. But it was needed for you because there was a gap. But we cannot move with you internationally that way. Are you hearing that? You have as a bucket that has been turned outside down and we sat on it. Now, since we have a sofa, then we take you to carry water because that's what you have been meant and created to do. Don't be a bucket that wants to be under people's bum for what? Why you should carry water? Because the sofa cannot carry water. So are you hearing me? I'm sorry, please don't forget this message. Don't forget this message. Like my brothers where I'm going to preach in July. They said, don't forget to, you know, don't forget this message. Are you hearing that? Now, the difficult thing in the church is to convince the bucket that you are not the chair. Oh, God. You go around, you say, uh, listen, uh, sh um, uh, what, what I'm trying to say, uh, <laughs> I've been saving all this time. They've been, if all what they do, they just sit on me, sit on me, sit on me. You need, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Yes, we sit on you. But, uh, you know, sitting on the bucket on the sofa, your bum will be crying and say, uh, you can't sit for a long time. Are you getting that? So listen to this. When you serve, then follow and then be open-minded and, and, and be ready to be directed and redirected. Yeah, in the company, they don't want, they just give you a notice and, 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 and thank you, thank you for servicing us. Your contract has been cut in the church. Kind of, in the church, it's not as easy as that. Number four, number four, to serve effectively, we have to we do it, we do it by being, look at this please, this one is very important. We do it by being humbled, somebody say humbled. By being humbled and serving while our success and authority and influence have increased. You get me? By being humbled and not just humbled only. There are people who are just humbled only. No work. Okay. By being humbled and serving while your success and authority and influence have increased. I'm trying to say, serving while promoted. Serving while you are a boss at work. Serving while you carry a prestigious profession. But being humble and serving. Serving while you are a millionaire, but you don't stop being an usher. Are you hearing me? Being an usher as a medical doctor. And that saves you as a medical doctor too while you are an usher. You, you're working. You are seeing people for who they are. If you sit down, you're going to start diagnosis. You see that one with that one, that one with that belly. I think I think she's got fibroids. You are sitting in the church, right? You are doing nothing. If you are doing nothing, you will see things. Oh, that one, the cheeks. Oh, that one, high blood, too high, needs attention now. That one may collapse before the service is over. You see, now we are sitting. We are doing nothing. Now we are seeing things that you should not be seeing now. Oh, that one, swollen feet. Oh, oh, I think. His kidneys are finished or something, you know. 
Then you see kids with jaundice and everything. No, no. But when you are busy and working and serving, then you don't have time for that. Are you hearing me? It's important to serve when God is upgrading you, promoting you. It's important. Some people, when they are promoted, then they see what they are doing in the house of God as something of low class. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing of low class in the house of God. Are you hearing me? Yes, it. Uh, in fact, in fact, David, or if you don't understand David, I mean King David, the king that was respected in the whole earth at his time. He said these words. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house. In other words, be a doorkeeper in the house of God. It's a privilege. A king wanted to be a doorkeeper than to be out of the house of God. He wanted to be an usher in the house of God and he saw it as a privilege. Now, oh God. Now the book of John chapter 13 from verse 3, from verse 3 to 5. John 13 from verse, are you getting something out of this? Am I boring you? Now look at this. Jesus, now I want you to understand and to see what Jesus is knowing. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. Can you see what the Father has done? He has promoted the Son. He has given all things. And that he had come from God and was going to God. Continue. He rose from the supper and laid aside his garments. Did you hear that? He laid aside his garments and took the towel, guarded himself. Right, continue. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel with which he was guarded. Let's start it again. When Jesus recognized, oh, some of you, you don't know. When Jesus was a child or a teenager, there are things he did not know about himself. When Jesus was five years, he did not know he was the son of God. He was young. We, we are not born knowing ourselves. We discover ourselves as we grow. So Jesus, when he was 12, for the first time, he recognized that he's the son of God. When he entered the temple and had the voice of the father, he said, no, I'm in my father's business. You know, for the first time. But before 12 years, he thought that his mother and father, his father, his biological father was Joseph. He, he, he did not know. So are you hearing this? So now when Jesus, when knowing, coming to knowing that the Father has trusted him with the whole world. All things mean the whole world. It means angels. It means seraphim and, uh, uh, and all those. Uh, seraphim and what? Uh, and chlorophyll, what? What did she say? <laughs> oh, seraphim, seraphim, right? Okay, yeah. So all, all those, the creatures in heaven and everything, all, everything on earth, everything under the earth and everything everywhere was given to Jesus. When Jesus was given all authority, he balanced himself by taking the towel. You did not hear what I said to you. He balanced himself by taking the towel. <laughs> Hey guys, when you get international, you have to have your roots in local. Don't fly with international and forget the local. Huh? Are you hearing that? Huh? When he understood how powerful he is, when he understood how God made him powerful, authoritative, he, 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 he said, for me to be sober, I have to humble myself. I have to serve. 
I have to wash the stinking feet. There was no need for him to wash the feet because the guys were not crippled. They could wash themselves. It takes humility to do for people what they can do for themselves and just do it for the sake of doing it because you are balancing yourself. You see, this is, no, this, it's, it's me. It's, it's, it's the way I balance myself. Yeah. If I'm in the place and the, and the a, a, a gray, a man of God, older man of God comes and there's no space to sit, I, I, I'm the first one to, to stand. Hey. I'm telling you, I'm the first one to stand, yeah. And there are pastors with five members. I'm an apostle too. You see what the Bible says? The Bible says God. It says Jesus humbled himself. Philippians 2. Humbled himself even to death. Even death on the cross. And the Bible says that's why God, after he humbled himself, that's why God has given him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is cross. How did he get the name? By humbling himself. When you humble yourself, God will exalt you. The Bible says those that exalt themselves, they shall be humble. But those that are humble, they shall be exalted. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up in due time touch your neighbor and say humble yourself hey guys the more degrees you get the more down you should go the more money you get the more you should go the, down the more fame you get the more you should humble yourself, the more famous you get, the more you should go down. Touch your neighbor and say this and say, go down, fat one. Go down. Yeah, go down. Go down. So when you recognize <laughs> when he recognized how powerful how powerful he is he, he, he ran to the basin he ran to the basin and, and, and he took water and he poured water do you know that Jesus as God to wash his, the feet of his disciples he had to bow to them the creator had to bow to creation hey humility is power pride is weakness when you see yourself better than other people more beautiful than other people more educated than other people more managed than other people I don't know listen listen I, I may have a number of shortcomings but pride is not one of them I run from that thing that thing is nasty that thing makes you an idol to yourself proud people are sometimes I look at other ladies I say do you think what we have come to do on earth is just to be gorgeous You see them Instagram everywhere you see them all what they've come to do on earth is to there's nothing else they've come to do and other guys they've come just to show cars and to flex and you know you know they've come to do you mean that you've just come for six pack we desire a six pack but uh, It's just that it's work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> we are not jealous. I'm just saying.
Some of us, we just have one pack and are satisfied. So, yeah. So Jesus balanced himself. So touch your neighbor and say, balance yourself out. Yeah, seek your eye. Balance yourself out. We are not where we are. Go- we are not where we want to go. We have not achieved all the things that God said we're going to achieve. We can't be beside ourselves. It's too early. <laughs> Did you hear that? Let me tell. Let me tell you the story. Oh God, this ish, this fifty thing. You know, let me tell you the story. Hey. I was shocked one day. I must have told the story before, but I don't know to which church. You see, this thing of churches. (laughs) I don't know which church I told this story, (laughs) but I know it's one. If I repeated it, act as if you you hear it for the first time. Don't embarrass me. He's saying it again. No, act as if I never told you. So one day we're at the funeral, and uh, they are pastors because... The son that died was a pastor's son. So we are all here as pastors. And uh, you know, we are standing and we are talking. So especially as pastors from Kailicha, Guguletu, but mostly Kailicha, but Guguletu, Nyanga, everywhere. Townships, different townships. Um, then we, as we are talking, we're talking with these pastors and we are greeting and greeting great pastors. And all of a sudden, sudden one of them says to me, Hey, Bishop Fino, I said, yeah. He said, hey, hey, man, we are human, man. Eh? I said, what, what do you mean by that? He said, he said you, you are reachable. I said, reachable for what? He said, no, you don't know the things we hear about you. I said, please tell me. If people say something, say me. <laughs> if, if there's one thing I want to know, even Jesus asked, he said, who do you say I am? They say, Sam, we are John. He did not say, shut up. He said, go on. So they say, I'm John, I'm what? I'm what? They say, you are Elisha, you are, you are Isaiah. He listened to the whole entire thing. When you tell me what people say about me, I will listen to the whole entire thing. And tell, did you she, leave anything else? She, just tell me. I want to know what people are saying. Yeah. No, no, no. The reason why I want to know what people are saying is because I have a strong heart. Whatever they say, bounce back. It does not stay. Are you hearing that? So now, then he said to me, you know, we are told that you are very cocky and very proud. I said, okay, then what did I do? They said, when you are invited in churches, number one, you've got a protocol team that will check if the church is at your standard. If the church is not at your standard, you will you would not, you will decline the invitation. I said, what do I do? I said, no, you go check the sound. I know, I know that I'm crazy about the sound. That's what I know. No, I'm crazy about the sound. We're about to upgrade this one too. <laughs> Are you hearing me? And then, 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 yeah, what about the sound? You check if the sound is good and what, what, what. You, they, they say you send your protocol in a week's time prior to preaching appointment. Check the mics. They check the mic that the bishop is going to use if it's at the standard of the bishop. I never knew that people think that I am so important. I was surprised. I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, boy, I never knew. You are so... <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I tripped over myself. I said, nope, you are too... They think we are there. Now the issue is this. God is so amazing. God will hide your pain and your struggle from people and show them... <laughs> You see, if your enemy could know your weaknesses and know your shortcomings, the enemy will finish you. That's the reason why God is hiding you. Don't you know that some of us, we become more beautiful when we are hungry? Yeah, 
serious. And I can tell you the truth. There are people, you see, some of you will notice when you don't have much food, your skin is glowing. It's God hiding you. Just imagine you're going to come with a pale mouth to church. Everybody will see you have not eaten for seven days. But God in his mercy will cover you so that the enemy will not laugh at you. So the enemy will not uh, ridicule you. So the enemy will be frustrated. God. God is a loving father. Even when he's disciplining us at times, he will put us behind the curtain. Bah, 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 discipline us. They don't see. You see that? So what you have to understand is that humbling yourself is the best thing you can do. Number five, before the last one. Effectively serving in the house of God by putting your heart fully into God's service. I mean putting your heart fully. Projecting your heart fully into what you are doing. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse, verse, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. It says, Therefore my dear, my dear brothers, be firm. Somebody say be firm. Brethren, be steadfast, immovable. Somebody say immovable. Always abounding in the work of God. Remember, he's not speaking to pastors. He's not speaking to evangelists. He's speaking to ordinary believers. God wants you to abound in his work. Your profession is not enough. It's not yummy. Are you hearing that? It's not enough. God wants you to abound in his work. Abound in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. There's nothing that's in vain that you do for God. There's no tithing that is in vain that you do for God. There's no serving that is in vain that you do for God. Whatever you do in God's house for the glory of God, it's not in vain. You see that? But you know what he says? He says, he says, he says we must be immovable. When you serve, there are things that will move you, will seek to move you. Satan is not happy that you serve. That's why serving at times becomes difficult. It has resistance. Because when we all serve, we make God shine. We make the house of God shine. We make the house of God beautiful and functional and healthy. So, he says that our, lab our labor is not in vain. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24. It says, in whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly. Or do it heartily. Can you see that the heart's there? Doing heartily as to the Lord and not to men. When you do things fully with your heart in the house of God, you do them as you were, it's like, as if you were doing it to Jesus. So in other words, when you serve, even when you serve your brother, your sister, or your men of God, you serve as though Jesus was in front of you and you were serving him. You get it? And then it says, knowing that the Lord, that from the Lord, you will receive the reward. There is reward in serving. I'm telling you there's reward in serving. Reward in serving. Oh God. There's reward in serving. You see, there's a scripture, the Bible person can get it. It says that God is not unjust that he will forget that your labor of love is not unjust. God is not unrighteous. God is not unjust that he should forget the labor of your love. 
can I tell you, everything you have ever done for God, it's recorded, it's kept, and it's not forgotten. Are you hearing me? It's not forgotten. God is not like men. We can forget you, but God is not going to forget you. Let me give you the last point. For God is not unjust. Can you see that one? God is not what? God is just. God is not unjust to forget what? Your work and labor of love. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to your job, that's not the labor of love. It's labor for living. Did you hear what I said to you? Yeah. That's labor for money. Yeah. When they pay you at the end of the month, you don't say, no, I was just doing my service. Do you say that? You don't, you don't say that, right? Now, God is not unjust, right? He's not unjust to forget your labor, your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name. Right? In that you have ministered to the saints. You have ministered to brothers and sisters. You have ministered to the church. As you do minister. In other words, you have not given up. You still continue. So you get it? Let's go to the last point. How can we serve effectively in the house of God? By serving without desiring someone else's life or blessings. I'm closing. You have no idea how much this is in the church. The competition. The envy. The tension between believers. Yeah. And, and you may notice since you have bought that car, one of your friends has drawn back. Huh? You, you get what I'm trying to say to you? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things sometimes you need to do in the church is to be successful just to, to lose friends. They love you while you are still struggling. All of you struggling, wearing some plastic shoes. They love you. Oh, my sister, everything. They, they love you that time. But once you get successful, some other people cannot handle your success. They cannot handle your success. Some other people in the church, they have, an, they have a, a Canaan's a, 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 what, attitude. Yeah, that can even kill the brother, kill the brother, kill the brother. If we say so and so is so, is so good at doing this, yes, it's good, but yeah, they have a Cain's attitude. Now, listen, we are speaking about the goodness of the person. Nobody, there is nobody who is strong everywhere with no weakness. Now, we are not discussing weaknesses and failures and shortcomings here. Now, why do you bring shortcomings while we speak about victories? It's jealousy. Because you want to paint the person bad. Ah, oh, no. He, he, no, he's, he, yeah, he's good, but his attitude. No, no, we know attitude, but we're, we're focusing on the good side of the person. Why do you bring bad while we are celebrating good? Are you hearing that? And that thing is so natural that we do it, we don't even feel or recognize or aware that we do it. So by serving Right, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, verse 38 to 40. Mark chapter 10, verse 38 to 40. I want you to see what the Bible, I'm closing. I want you to see what the Bible says. Guys, I'm not saying that we may not be impacted by other people's lives, right? We can look at other people and be inspired. For example, I was listening to this guy called Ekon. Is it Ekon? So lonely, Mr. Long, I have nobody. In fact, they don't sing like that. It's not, uh, I have nobody. It's like, ah, you know, right. So he speaks about that he adored Michael Jackson. So when he was growing up, he was listening to Michael Jackson, loved Michael Jackson's music. Michael Jackson was like his idol and all of those things. And one day he received a, a call from Michael Jackson and he dropped it. He said, no, don't play with me. 
you know, he, he thought it was not Michael, maybe somebody was. When he, when, when he discovered it was Michael Jackson, then he dropped the phone. Michael Jackson had to call again. But if you look at the music of Michael Jackson and the music of Akon, it's not the same. But Michael Jackson inspired Akon to find himself. Not to be like Michael Jackson. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Are you, are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? Now, let's check the story. Oh, let's say, gentlemen, are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? I have, I have, I have, I have somebody, I have T.D. Jakes inspired me to preach and all of those things. And I preached like him some way, somehow. Then I, then I found myself and, uh, you know, a number of things, you see. Now, let's, let's read here. The Bible says now, but Jesus, now, uh, the mother is coming, uh, is asking for, for, for his kids, for his, for his sons, uh, elderly sons, to say, Jesus, when you come to your kingdom, I want my son, one of my sons to sit on your right in, in the kingdom and the other one on your left. All right? So th this, this is the request that is being uh, given to Jesus. Now, but Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. You, are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Are you able to do that? Let's let, go on. Let's look at the answer. They said to him, we are able. These guys, huh? they mean they can carry the, they can be crucified on the cross, right? We are able. So Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink and with the baptism that I baptized, that's how, the way they died they died yeah yeah if you if you check history the guys were asking yeah <laughs> okay so they said you will indeed you will indeed you know but to sit on my right or on my left it's not mine to give but it is for those for whom it has been prepared now listen to me as I close please be careful not to desire someone else's life Because that's where jealousy comes. And that's where being diverted from your purpose comes. Be inspired by people, but use their inspiration to discover yourself. Are you hearing that? And most of us here, when we grew up, we spoke like our mummies. We used their vocabulary because we're still learning. But after we've grown up, we developed our own expressions. Are you hearing that? Now look at this. Here's the danger. Let me tell you what is the danger. If you want to be like David and to live his life and to be the king like David, then... You are asking God for Goliath. You are asking God for Bathsheba. You are asking God. Okay, I wish I could talk to you. I wish you, I wish I could talk to you. Because, because it has to be the whole package. So if you want to be like me, it has to be the whole package. You have to face my Goliath. You have to face my temptations. You have to face my, my being hunted by Saul and running and living in the cave. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm trying to say to you. If you want to be like Christ, it means that you say you want the cross. You want the rejection. You want them to spit on you and things like that. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? So you must be careful not to desire other people's lives because you don't know how much it took them for them to be there. You don't know the things they have faced to be there. You don't know the lions and the bears that they had to kill. You don't know the stresses, the depression that they have done. If you wish to be like Michael Jackson, you need to understand that one day you will die of overdose I wish I could talk to you are you here I'm trying to say to you in other words when you desire to be like other person you desire their struggles too but normally we don't concentrate on the struggles we only concentrate on the glamour on the power we don't concentrate on the weakness we don't concentrate on the sleepless nights we don't concentrate on the rejection we don't concentrate on the negative
Let me tell you this as I close. Life is made out of positive and negative. That's where fire comes from. Like a battery, like electricity. There has to be negative. There has to be positive. It is the negative that balances the positive. You can't desire to be like Mandela and not buy into 27 years in prison. If there are people who desire to be like me, I would say, if I can give them one day. I mean one day. Some may, may resign one day. Because if you want the glory, then you have to endure the suffering. Then you'd have to be hated like me. appreciating thinking that in your life all things are just like whew. are you hearing me somebody you can look at you can look at somebody and say I want to be like that woman I want to be like that woman but let me tell you something you want to be like her you know she's got businesses she's famous she's got this she's got a style she's got this but she has been divorced four times don't forget the divorce don't forget the divorce don't look at glamour and forget the divorce. Be able to say you want to embrace everything. You can't choose. Oh, I want to be like, so do you know that they've been employed, unemployed for 10 years? Before their greatest breakthrough in life? Don't wish that you would have been born by different parents. These ones you have <laughs> are God ordained. Did you hear what I said to you? Did you see? Did you hear what I said to you? Yeah, your mother is unfair as your mother can be uh, as unfair. Your father can be as unfair as what, whatever that you think. But th th this life was meant for you to live. Live it with dignity until you conquer until you have victory until you win do you know that if you wish to be like someone else and they are successful some of them have been raped you can't exclude rape you then must be willing to be raped too. Life is made out of negative and positive. If you take negative out of life, life will be boring. Do you know that? Life will be boring. What makes anything strong in life? Do you know what it is? R write it down. We close by this. You know what makes things strong in life? Struggle. Oh, are you hearing me? Struggle. Struggles make life precious. I saw the millionaire he's got he's got in the states he's 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 a they call it mogul you know he's got different restaurants in different parts of the states but when this guy was at the show steve harvey show <laughs> the guy cried like a baby when he told his story on how he grew up and the things that happened in his life what makes him to appreciate having money is the poverty 
he went through that balances life the reason why some of the kids of the millionaires kill themselves is because they don't know how it means to be poor they are not balanced out they just they just kill themselves for for they they put um, something they posted a post on Instagram and only five people commented <laughs> then they thought what a rejection and they need counseling can you believe rich kids they cry about stupid things and they get depressed about stupid things foolish things serious yeah Ah, a rich child, they fall and hit themselves against the wall. Then the mother says, from the time, five years ago, we are struggling with her. From that time, she fell and hit herself against the wall. How many scratches does, do township kids have? I'm telling you, my God. Yeah. Those ones, they cut themselves, they, even, they don't even tell mommy. They, they, they take the pain without, you know. <laughs> so you see that. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes experiencing pain in life is the protection. I was listening to the, the talk uh, of uh, Mark G and these are the guys. No, me, me, I, I listen to these things. <laughs> They're speaking about a certain musician who was like suicidal, showing some suicide symptoms on life. You know, doing something and even using substance during life. I, I remember the other one killed himself on life, like boom, with a gun. So they were discussing. Some were feeling for the person and some were not feeling for the person. It's very difficult for me much more to feel for the person who kills himself. It's difficult. I'm coming from the time where I had migraine headaches. I mean migraine headaches. You know, do you know migraine headaches? It's like crickets in your head, boom, moving different directions. There are things you should take decisions about and let the demons know that you are not moving in that direction. Suicide is one of them. You tell yourself, no matter what problem I go through, Killing myself is not an option. Demons know. Your will is strong. Demons know that you're not moving to that direction. And it's demonic. Because I just want to kill myself. Now I feel, I feel like killing myself. Are you hearing this? While other people... They are not killing themselves. They are trying to feel themselves. I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. Huh? <laughs> Can you believe people are fighting for their lives in the hospital? You are 100% healthy. Huh? And you want to kill what other people desire to have. That's even more than selfish. You see, I think the people who commit suicide would make the world a better place if God created a system that you can borrow somebody's life. They have to say, you see, I want to kill myself. And I see you can't breathe. You are in ICU. You can't breathe. 
and the doctors, they want to disconnect the machine, then I'm killing myself, then you... <laughs> you take mine, because I don't need it. Then that would be good. But now if somebody can't use you, then it's a useless, it's a useless thing. And the reason why I'm speaking about here is because this thing is prominent to young people. It's amazing. People who don't have work. They are not feeding anybody. They are not paying any bill. Their duty is to go to school, eat, and go to the loo. That's all. What, what, what do you do, kids? What do you do? You go, you eat, go to school, go to the loo. Those things, you, your life is around... You are not responsible for anybody's life. Eh? How can you not be responsible for your own life? And say that you want to kill yourself. I think I've, I've helped somebody in this house. When I don't, listen, I don't, I don't have time of burying my spiritual kids or commit, or commit suicide and things like that. I will shambok you in your coffin. <laughs> telling you. Huh. Did, you. did you hear what I said to you? Yeah, it's amazing. Let me close. It's amazing that um, uh, uh, Bishop T.D. Jake says that he was, he was sick and he couldn't, he couldn't breathe properly. I'm not sure if it was Corona. And he could... <gasps> He says he was <gasps> gasping for air. And his wife came to him and said, if you die, I will kill you. <laughs> then, he, then, he, then he thought, hey, I must not die. <laughs> because if I die... This woman will kill me. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, escape. Come on, escape. Come on.